Hi, and welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain the concept in biology in less than 5 minutes. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, now please hit that subscribe button. In today's installment, we'll be talking about Western blot. Now, Western blot is a technique which would allow us to detect our protein of interest in a pool of protein. Now, nowadays, it is like widely used as a diagnostic tool in many infectious disease, which we will be talking about. And diseases like HIV might be diagnosed using Western blot. So Western blot has immense importance. And in fundamental research, Western blot is also very important. So we would discuss all these aspects in this video. So let's start how the Western blot works. So in Western blot, you have to take your cell lysate or protein extract or bacterial extract, anything from where you want to get the protein source. So you have to separate the protein along the molecular weight in a SDS page gel. So the first degree separation is doing SDS page. And in this situation, you separate the proteins according to their molecular weight. So there would be different different bands from the protein sample. Now your proteins must be lying in these one of these bands, right? Now, this is how an exact gel look like in case of uh, after SDS page running and stained with Kumasi blue. Now, the second part of Western blot is to transfer these uh, proteins into a PVDF membrane so such that you can detect your protein of interest. Let's say you have only a gel and in the gel, you know roughly around 75 kb you have your protein of interest. But the problem is, even if your protein is like 75 kd, you know that. You never know what other proteins are of 75 kd present in that particular sample. So there could be many different proteins which are of molecular weight 75 kd and present in the sample. So without doing a western blot, you cannot tell whether your protein of interest is present just on basis of the band size. So what you do in Western blot, you take the gel and for example, this is your, you know, this is the band of your interest, but it might be some other proteins as well. So what you do is like you put it in a transfer apparatus where you put the SDS gel and on top of it you put a PVDF membrane and you transfer either by chemically or by electrical field. So most popular is electrical field or electrobot blot these days. So as a result, what would happen? The proteins that are now on the gel would be eventually transferred and be on the membrane. So now once we have all the proteins in the membrane, we can start to detect our protein of interest by antibody specific manner. So we need an antibody which can detect our protein of interest. And we have to understand that that antibody is monoclonal and it's non, not specific to any other protein. It is very specific to the my protein of interest. Now, on the membrane, there would be several protein bands and several proteins, right? So, all of these proteins are present in the lysate that we have taken. Now, we have to detect the protein of our interest. That is, this particular protein where the antibody is binding. So, we would only get a band in that region. So, once the antibody binds, we can use several colorimetric, chemiluminescence or fluorescence based method to detect the particular protein of interest. And most popular way of detection these days are chemiluminescence. Now, Western blot could be used for diagnosis of several diseases. One big example is AIDS. So let's just take a look how it works. So for example, we suspect a patient is uh, infected by HIV virus. So we take the blood sample of that patient, we extract the proteins and we run it onto our gel. Now, after that, we, after running the gel, we take the gel, we blot it and try to detect that our suspected antigen is present or not. For HIV, there are known biomarkers like, for example, GP120 is one of the suspected antigen that has to be present if the um, patient is infected by HIV. So we have to blot against that particular protein. And if we see a positive band, that means the patient is infected. So for example, HIV virus has GP120 and GP120 against GP120, we could have specific antibodies. Now we can detect that specific antibodies in 
any of chemical luminescent or colorimetric way and that would give us distinct band if we get a band that means the patient is affected if we don't get a band the test is negative now not only in diagnosis or medical usage western blot is widely used for studying fundamental scientific research so in basic cell signaling could be studied by western blot for example let's say imagine a receptor is activated one once a ligand is bound and there are a cascade of events and most important event is phosphorylation of these blue protein so once the phosphorylation of the blue protein takes place then other nuclear events and downstream event can take place so this is a crucial event let's say so these days we have antibodies specific to the unphosphorylated protein versus the phosphorylated epitope so the phosphoepitope antibody allows us to understand how much phosphorylation has taken place and the degree of phosphorylation would in turn tell us about the status of the signaling so in the plot if we get two bands corresponding to one to the phosphoepitope and one to the normal epitope then we might say the signaling has turned on or turned off so based on the situation of the phosphorylation we can understand the signaling is turned on or turned off right so these are the overall usage of western blot i mean two basic examples i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you